Hello everybody, this is Johns Hopkins with Baltimore Heritage and we're back with another of our 5 Minute Histories videos. And today I'm on McCullough Street, east of Martin Luther King. I think I'm kind of in the northern part of the Seton Hill neighborhood, or maybe the western part of the Mount Vernon neighborhood, where those two kind of intersect. And I'm inside the Arena Playhouse, which is home to Arena Players, the nation's oldest continuously operating black community theater, um, which is really pretty cool. Um, and that's what we're to talk about today. And by we, I really do mean we, because I'm privileged uh, to be joined today by David Mitchell, who's the managing director of the theater. And I'm going to turn it over to him in a second. But you know, I have to just say a word or two about where we are, uh, the building, and about Arena Players as a, a theater troupe. Um, Arena Players got here in this building in 1961, um, but the building got started way before then, back to 1890 or so. It started out as a livery. If you don't know what a livery is, a livery was where you parked your horse uh, when you weren't using it and had somebody else take care of it for a fee, of course. Um, and it was a livery uh, and stables for a long number of years. It was a good location for that because it was right next door to a company called the Hartman and Moore Carriage Factory. They made horse-drawn carriages. So you could come here and get your new carriage and then I guess either rent or buy a horse next door, kind of a package combination. Um, the livery changed hands a number of times. For a while it was called uh, University Stables. And if you're scratching your head and saying, why University Stables? Well, before Hopkins negotiated its deal with the city and got Homewood Campus, the university got its start just a block or two away from here, as well as uh, Baltimore City College. If you are not a Baltimorean, that's actually a high school, um, but uh, it got one of its early starts here as well. So uh, University really kind of made sense uh, at that time. As horses and carriages were phasing out, uh, the building had uh, became a number of different things. For a while, it was a church hall for St. Mary's Episcopal Church. During World War I, it was uh, something called the War Camp Community Service Club for Colored Soldiers. Um, inside, it's deceptively large. It held 200 soldiers uh, with room for uh, beds and a dining hall um, and even a dance hall as well. Um, in the 1940s, it became St. Mary's Hall Nursery School for black Baltimore kids. And then in the 1960s, the kids were out and uh, storage was in. It became a warehouse, but only for a very short time because in 1961, arena players began renting this space, using it as their theater. Um, and by 1969, they had purchased the building outright. They kept raising money. In the middle of the 1970s, they did an enormous restoration. They engaged a brand new, relatively new nonprofit organization called the Neighborhood Design Center at that time. Um, it got its start in the aftermath of the Martin Luther King Jr. riots, um, helping match uh, architects and design professionals with community groups to do uh, make our neighborhood stronger, as well as they were able to engage one of Baltimore's earliest pioneering black architects, an architect named Leon Bridges. And together, uh, they turned this former livery, former um, soldier's home, former warehouse, into a 300-seat theater, and they've called it home ever since. All right, let me uh, wrap up with a word about Arena Players before turning it over to Mr. Mitchell. Arena Players got its start not in 1961, but back in 1953. It was really an outgrowth of a project called the Little Negro Theater at Coppin State University in West Baltimore. Its early years, it was somewhat nomadic. It uh, held shows at the YMCA on Druid Hill Avenue. It held shows at St. Mary's uh, Church in Walbrook. It held shows at the Murphy Theater at Morgan State University in East Baltimore. But again, in 1961, um, it found its uh, forever home uh, here. Let me wrap up uh, uh, by saying one word. Back in its early days, it was one of the very few, a handful of places, um, certainly here in Maryland, but really across the country, uh, that was dedicated to featuring black playwrights and black artists. Today, uh, black playwrights and artists, uh, performers, um, have more options than they did then, but Arena Players uh, remains a premier, premier uh, uh, organization in theater to uh, show your play or begin uh, or uh, launch your acting career in. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to uh, David Mitchell, again, the managing director here at uh, Arena Players. Well, hi, everybody. Uh, thanks for, uh, for listening in or tuning in. Um, Arena Players, you know, like 
like you've heard, has been around since 1953, and it was a place where, you know, African Americans came because they had nowhere else to go. That is African American artists and theater practitioners. Uh, they came here because they had nowhere else to go. And over time, um, we've become that safe space, that, that creative space for a lot of African Americans. Uh, we have one of the oldest youth theaters in Maryland, uh, uh, being around, going on 55 years now. Uh, there have been generations and generations of individuals that have come through our youth theater that have gone on to, to do Broadway, to, to hold political careers, to be CEOs of companies, uh, but you know, got their inspiration and their start here at the Playhouse. Um, and so, uh, since we've been around for so long uh, and in this building since the, uh, the 60s, uh, you can imagine that um, there's a lot of uh, work to be done <laughs> on the facility. Uh, you know, our, our last comprehensive renovation was quite some time ago, and so we are coming up on the cusp of some major capital improvements uh, for the building. Uh, and for us, that means uh, revitalizing our, our primary theater space and also activating other spaces uh, throughout the three-story building so that we have an additional performance space, additional rehearsal rooms, uh, additional office space, and uh, our, our hope and desire is that we can expand our programming and also identify new partners and new collaborators as we do so. So um, do come out do come and experience the theater. Um, we are actually opening uh, our next show. We're, we're more than halfway through the theater uh, season now, uh, but we have three shows left, uh, and the next one opens on the 22nd of April. Uh, it's called The Butler Did It Again, right? It's a murder mystery, and so we really would like you all to come out and have that experience, but also the experience of just crossing a threshold of, of a historic institution. Yeah. After that, we have a, a musical, a gospel musical, um, and then after that, we have our, our ending um, offering for the season, which is Flowers for Phyllis, which is a, a play about Phyllis. Phyllis Hyman. Uh, so uh, lots to see and lots to do here at the Playhouse. It's not just about plays. Uh, we do acting lessons. We do all kinds of uh, community events. Uh, we, hold, we host a, a lot of community meetings here. So there's always a way to get involved. We're a 100% volunteer organization. Uh, and so uh, most people don't know that when, when they encounter us. And so uh, we're always looking for people uh, to, to pitch in. So come on down.